talk about how, at least for you, what was it like, you know, the, the consequences of a missing father figure. You're like, I don't even know what it is to be raised with a father figure. Sometimes we don't talk about that enough. We talk about, oh, let me tell you what that kid did. Let me, well, let me tell you the role of a father plays in a man's life and what it looks like if he's not there. Yeah. So what were some of the things, like, you know, where you're like, I came home one day and I needed to talk to a man, talk to a man, not my mom. A man wasn't there. I came home with what were some of those events during that time that impacted your life? Yeah, this is like a Tarantino movie. What, what I was saying earlier in my 10 to 15-year-old days where I just got pushed and beat up yeah. and I never stood up for myself. Um, There's this new kid, Chuck, who came to school, another white kid like me. I'm like, I'm going to make friends with this guy. Mm -hmm. um, but from day one, he was getting in fights, but he was fighting back and blood was everywhere. You know, I'm like, fuck, you know, like maybe I could still make friends. And I made friends with him. And then, and then when, when they knew that he was going to fight back, he made friends with them. And so I no longer had a friend. And they said, some, uh, they said something about me that he no longer wanted to be my friend. So he comes out into the courtyard and he starts pushing me and pushing me. And I'm walking back and I'm walking back. And now there's 30 people. There's a big fucking crowd. Yeah. And, um, anyways, I tripped over a planter and I fell on my ass. And I said, you, you don't want to fight me. I'm a fucking pussy. You know, and I believe that. Um, and here's the thing, you know, like, again, I, so I go home and I do the same thing. I'm like... You know, I, I wish I had somebody to talk to about this, you know, and but it was the same conversation I had with myself in the mirror, like, you're a fucking piece of shit, you're worthless, you know, what are you going to do to change your life? Um, this big thing happened that changed my life. Not too long after that, um, this kid, Chris Rivera, wanted to pick a fight with me. If he got in this fight, he would join this gang. And so they tell me, hey, there's this fight that you need to be in. And, uh, and when I say they tell me, my brother, I have an older brother. Um, and, uh, and his friend, Justin and Justin's mom was around and they said, you need to be in this fight. And I'm like, what? I've never been in a fight. <laughs> I've never thrown a, a punch back. I wish I had the dad that said, Hey, listen, it doesn't matter if you get your, the shit handed to you. You need to stand up for yourself. You need to fight. You need to do this thing for yourself. But nobody told me that. Um, and you know, I think this might be one of the greatest things that happened to me at, th at this stage of my life. I believe this is my first true rite of passage. Uh, what ends up happening is, um, Justin's mom says, you need to fight because you're strong. And then Justin said that too. And my brother said that. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking? Do you even know who I am? Do you know, you know what I'm thinking? Anyways, they convinced me to do it. She drove me to the fight. Oh, wow. She drove me to the, the fight. Your friend's mom? In the van. Oh, Sam. In the van. Gangster. And, uh, and, and speaking of gangster, I mean, this, his gang was behind him. <laughs> He's standing there. And I get out of the van. My heart's going a mile a minute. I kind of walk up quickly. He's waiting there for me. He starts approaching me. I'm facing him. And, um, and I threw a punch from like a mile away. All, everything that I had. <laughs> you know, maker. <laughs> I had no idea what was going on. Yeah. Um, I threw myself to the ground. Oh, geez. You know, I wish I could see this today. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no. And comment, comment on it. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. If, you, if you could see this. <laughs> Again, I, I know it came from a mile away. Yeah. I know I gave it every fucking thing that I had, yeah. you know. And so I threw myself on the on the ground so hard I could have knocked myself out probably. Oh my God, that's hilarious. And this guy Chris comes up to to kick me because I'm on the ground, and um, I was able to catch his foot. I was able to get a hold of his legs. I was able to feel how strong I was, oh, wow. and I manhandled him. That's awesome. And I put him on the ground, and I manhandled him so effortlessly that I pinned both of his elbows to the ground underneath my knees. I have this hand on the neck. I don't know if you've seen this shit in the movie, but it's like all from the fucking movie. Yeah. And so I'm getting ready to do my thing. And I looked in his eyes and I saw this pathetic, scared as fuck, hopeless, helpless kid. And, uh, and so I saw me and I couldn't do it. There's no fucking way I could wow. do it. And um, mm. just the other day, I'm, I'm, I'm in the car driving to go to say my apology uh, video, and I'm telling myself this story. Why, 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 why do you have to overtrade? Like, what, what are you dealing with? And I'm telling the story, and I'm getting choked up, and I'm like, holy shit, like, I'm able to go deep on this. I, I, I know I can talk about this. I know that this is, you know, a big, big part of that issue. Um, and I couldn't do it. And I got up, and, uh, and he didn't, there was no retaliation whatsoever. He, there, there was a mutual understanding here. Um, there was a mutual understanding between us. The gang's throwing rocks mm -hmm. and, and cracks her mini, cracks the window in the minivan. We get back inside. She says, I'm proud of you. Justin says, I'm proud of you. My brother says, uh, I'm proud of you. Mm. You're strong. And um, you know what I knew right then is like, as worthless as I had felt up to that point, I can do that. And if I can do that, what else am I capable of? And I knew that it had been my working out that had led me to that. And now I finally got the first time, first chance in my life 
to feel what that felt like to actually be strong, to have some sense of fucking control. Thank God, you know, that, that this happened. Um, but I will say this, this started this maniacal drive to be in the gym, to do this, to double down. It's like, um, I, I, I know what my roles and goals are in life. Like, I only pick a few of them because I know I can only be great at a few things. I'm not a good son. I'm not a good brother. I'm not even a good friend. It's like, you know what? I'm, 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 I'm good to myself to express my highest and most dominant form like as a man. I know I'm a good husband. I know I'm a good father. I dedicate everything to that. There's, there's these other things, these other roles that are important to me that I'm probably the worst in the world at. But this is what I knew, like there's this maniacal drive, the ability to have some sense of control, some strength. So um, I don't even know how this whole thing started, but this, this, is, this is why I started telling the story, man. It's because uh, thank God that happened. I was about the father figure and the mentoring because I, cause he wasn't there, but she stepped in. Justin's mom stepped in. She told me to do this. This was the equivalent of what a dad should do, wow. you know. Um, and so thank God I did that. Shout out to the mom. Wow. Wherever she is, if she's around, that's a people. Are don't you realize. still you still keep, keep in contact with them or no? Oh no, you know I mean this is in middle school. Um, there are no cell phones or anything. You know, <laughs> I mean, cell phones didn't come out till I was after college. Yeah. But um, but but here's the thing: uh, this guy and his mom were uh, involved with some really illegal shit. <laughs> and uh, and my mom said there ain't no fucking way you're gonna go to the high school that this middle school feeds to. By the way, I want to point this out. In eighth grade, I almost figured out how to how to fit in. Now I got my ears pierced, I'm slicked back. I'm now I finally have some hand me downs from one of my mom's boyfriends where. I'm kind of figuring this out. Uh -huh. Then my mom says, you ain't going to be friends with this guy anymore. We're moving over here. And it doesn't even matter if we have the same phone number, which she changed the number anyways. Like we, there's no more connection. And, and this was one guy that I had started to gain respect from. And I couldn't believe she was going to take my friend away. I had just figured out how to kind of fit in. Mm -hmm. She moves me to an all Caucasian school now. Oh, <laughs> now I don't look like anybody again. Because now I got my hair slicked back. I'm wearing baggy pants. Everybody has short hair. Everybody's an athlete. Everyone's wearing these, uh, like, kicker, you know, tight jeans yep. and boots. I got to do it all over again, you know. And once again, like, th these are all gifts. You know, like, I went through that. And a big part of um, what I try and, you know, challenge myself to figure out with my own boys is how do I put these kind of challenges? Not, not I would never wish this upon anybody, what, what I went through. But I know I got to make life hard for them. And so I got to figure out, you know, well, how do I do that and not burn a bridge? How do mm -hmm. we not, not, not go too far? Um, so uh, I, I would say, like, that, that's probably just a classic opportunity. You know, like, she was like my dad, and she mentored me, and I think she changed the trajectory of my life in that minute. So with all the craziness taking place, I believe future looks bright. If you believe future looks bright, get your latest future looks bright hat of value Tamen. It says future looks bright here, future looks bright here. We got them in white. We got them in black, we got them in red, our black on black sold out. These are about to sell out. If you haven't ordered one yet, we had a person in Michigan, bought one, then he bought three, then when those three people were in the office, they had to order 58 of them because people wanted the Future Looks Bright hat, especially during times like this because ain't nobody saying Future Looks Bright. To order your Future Looks Bright hat, click over here, and to watch the entire podcast, click here. Take care, everybody.